Posse work. Hey, busy. What's going on today, guys? Massive. I can't think of anything here. Got a lot of interesting news for you today. Bitwig and Studio One added something insane to their DAW. We got free plugins. We got a new version of the SM7B. We're going to talk about the music production news. In our first story of the day, Bitwig and Studio One have added something incredibly forward thinking to their DAWs. As you may know, there has been no way in the past to share projects between DAWs unless you use stems or you use something such as Dylan Tallchief's FL Studio to Ableton Converter. There are some other file formats as well that do something similar, but they lack the power and detail that this will bring to the table. Anyways, they created a new project file format, DAW Project. I know, extremely creative name. The files contain all information related to time, tracks, and channels, along with note and automation data. Both audio and MIDI data is supported, and it even carries across the state of plugins between projects, provided that you have the appropriate effects and instruments or whatever installed. So this means that you can pack up your project and send it between DAWs, at least at the moment if it's Bitwig or Studio One, or any DAW that supports this file format going forward. <clears throat> The ball's in your court, Ableton. I know you guys watch my videos. I challenge you. You have no balls. You won't do it. Please do it. I'm, I'm really thinking about going to Bitwig. I could definitely see Reaper doing it in the next year. Pro Tools will never support it. If they do, they will do it in 10 years and call it innovation. If you're interested in this at all and don't use these DAWs, I suggest you bug the out of the people that make your DAW harass them real life social media whatever you got to do i mean don't don't like really harass them but bug them be like i want this feature please give me this feature i currently do not know how well this works it's something that just came out but i do think it's a great idea i think this is definitely more game changing than what fl studio has been doing recently i know everyone's been glazing fl studio lately but i think this is actually a lot cooler than uh extracting stems which is something you could already do in our next story we have a free plugin from Waves Audio? Hmm, that's a surprising one. They are offering MetaFilter for free until September 30th. $149 list price, $29 sale price, free right now. So you mean the list price and sale price are both $29, huh? 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 Their shit's always on sale. <coughs> it appears to me that it's a filter shaping plugin with a sequencer built into it, allowing you to turn the effects on and off or to different degrees depending on what step you're in. I've never personally used it, so I can't speak on its quality, but if you want to check it out, it'll be linked in the description along with everything else today uh, that is like a, that requires a link. You get the picture. Did you know that going to a show once a week could actually be good for your health? provided that you wear sufficient hearing protection and are not passing around the super flu. This was a study from 2018, so this was before the super flu, but I saw a recent article posting about it, so we're gonna pretend like it's new. A study found that concert attendance could actually increase your lifespan by up to nine years. The logic here is that live music increases feelings of self-worth, closeness to others, and especially mental stimulation. <clears throat> not gonna lie, the last two times I went to a show, I got the super flu, so. Not sure. I'm not sure what the impact of that is on uh, how long you live, but I'm not sure if it's outweighing it currently. Maybe I'm just really unlucky. Many of you may have heard of the SM7B. In fact, you can click on basically any video podcast on YouTube and you could see a whole grip of these. Well, Sure just released the SM7DB, a new upgraded version of the coveted microphone. The main difference aside from it being black instead of charcoal is that they added a built-in preamp that you can turn on and off. The preamp circuit allows it to be louder. Typically with an SM7B, you need a cloud lifter or a strong preamp to boost the volume to a reasonable level. There's a switch on it as well that allows you to switch back to the passive mode of the SM7B. The SM7B is a moderately costly microphone. It'll run you $399, while the SM7DB will run you $499. In today's episode of Old Man Yelling at the Clouds, we have Keith Richards waking up and choosing violence with everyone, with everyone apparently. This is from a recent interview. This is from a recent interview with Telegraph. He basically starts off by saying he doesn't want to complain about pop music, but then he goes on to complain about pop music, saying, It's always been rubbish. I mean, that's the point of it. They make it as cheap and easy as possible, and therefore it always sounds the same. There's very little feel in it. I mean, he isn't wrong about that at all, but this is about to get a whole lot weirder. Then he follows it up talking about electronic music. I like to hear music by people playing instruments. That is, I don't like to hear plastic synthesized music as it used to be known when you hear in elevators, which is now par for the course. Uh, secondly, you can play an instrument and it could still be electronic music. Keith, I know you're hard of hearing because you're so old. This is a MIDI keyboard. 
It is a keyboard that you can use to play notes, and then when you play the notes, it makes sound, much like an instrument. Obviously, provided that it's connected to a computer with some sort of synth or something. Blah, 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 blah. I know it's a very hard concept to grasp. Many can't understand it. You don't just press a button and then music the entirety of music comes out, sorry, Muzak, you actually play it like an instrument. It requires skill. Now I know people can draw in notes there, but that's the same thing as composing. Do I need to explain composing too? Anyways, Muzak is a totally different thing, whatever. Then he follows it up by ranting about hip hop. Oof. All right. I don't really like to hear people yelling at me and telling me it's music, AKA rap. I can get enough of that without me leaving my house. Is this guy all right? I mean, he has to know that rap music doesn't generally consist of yelling. I mean, there are probably some songs with yelling in it. I mean, you could probably like, you cherry pick a few that have yelling in it, but they generally do not have yelling in them. I would say it's a little more like punk, probably more likely be the genre that constantly has yelling in it. Anyways, uh, cope, seethe, and mauled. In our next story, IK Multimedia has a new plugin on the way, and it's suspected to be a piano, an instrument, dare I say. Let's check it out. Okay, that was the most puzzling, unidentifiable commercial I've ever seen for something. Uh, I would have to assume it's a piano by the Muzak I was hearing. They will most likely be adding to their Moto range of plugins, a new piano plugin. It would actually be great if this ended up not being a piano at all. If they ended up releasing a guitar, it was just a complete curveball just to throw everyone off. In our next story, Boozy says that he turned down $250,000 to perform at an LGBTQ event, stating that that's not what I believe in. And I'm calling absolute cap on that. There is absolutely no one on the planet that'll pay $250,000 to see Boozy perform, especially an LGBTQ event especially after that tweet he made with Lil Nas a while back. Even without that, there's nobody paying him 250 k He's lying. He's straight up lying. In our next story, we're going to talk about a free open source synth named Wavetable. Wait, it's actually named Wavetable? I couldn't think of a better name than Wavetable? Well, this thing is doomed right out of the gate. There's no way that anyone's going to be able to find this on Google. The only way they're going to find this is in my video or in one of the news outlets covering this as well. Search Wavetable Synth or Wavetable Plugin. Yeah, you're not finding that. Anyways, it supports MPE, it has a pretty nice looking UI, two Wavetable oscillators, as well as a noise and sub oscillator, filters, LFOs, envelopes, effects, the works. It features 100 Wavetables and 100 presets. Definitely pretty good for a free synth. I don't know if it'll challenge Vital, but it might be worth checking out. Breaking news here, Roland just released the Gaia 2. It's a 37 key keyboard, the successor to their 2010 synth, which was recently discontinued, which seems to be a moderate step forward in terms of features such as more knobs and sliders that you can tweak on the panel. There's also a new motion pad in the middle of the user interface. It features hybrid wavetable oscillators, which can morph between multiple waveforms as well as virtual analog oscillators. It has a total of three oscillators. One is a wavetable with 63 morphing waveforms, allowing you to change the position phase and shape yeah this part's not gonna be super entertaining guys i'm just reading off features don't know what to tell you don't worry though it's we're gonna get to the funny after this section this section is just not funny the other two use virtual analog synthesis with classic waveforms as well as super saw and five noise types you can also alter them with shape ring mod sync cross mods and unison like i can make some jokes about like unison audio ha, ha, unison unison audio but like you guys are here for highbrow comedy okay that is not highbrow comedy it features their zen core system which is compatible with roland's model expansions meaning you can load up older instruments of theirs such as the jupiter 8 juno 106 and more it features a 64 step sequencer with a random pattern generator as well as parameter automation don't leave don't leave i promise it gets better. As typical envelope controls, as well as an arpeggiator with various modes and scale function, it is $899. Okay, now back to the good stuff. Well, actually it's not really good stuff, but it is, it's funnier. It's at least funnier. Moog has shared a statement following the massive layoffs. You may remember I talked about a few episodes ago. They laid off over 30 team members from Moog, which may not seem like a considerable amount, but you have to keep in mind this is a small company. I announced this in one of my last videos. I will link it down below if you want to get more information on it. Long story short though, InMusic bought out Moog 
and a few months later they laid off a bunch of people. In this statement, Moog says a few things that uh, seem a bit like red herrings or straw mans to me. They stated that their newest innovations will be shared in early 2024, so get your fingers crossed for that hybrid Akai Moog Key 99 or whatever. Real quick, I just want to mention, during this section I was quoting the old version of their post. They actually keep editing the post to make it more and more vague. We want to thank everyone who reached out over the last several days to check in on us. Are you okay? Blink if in music is holding you hostage. As you probably know, it's been a very hectic time at Moog. We're making certain changes to ensure our long-term financial health and continued innovation and would like to share important and accurate information with you. There is definitely something to be said about Moog's old business model not working in today's market. In music does not have a great track record with brands that they decide to buy. People often say it's where brands go to die. They did state that laying off all these people hasn't been easy for anyone and they did provide compensation and benefits as these people plan their next career steps. First, our headquarters will remain in Asheville where we will continue to design, innovate, and manufacture instruments of the highest standard, such as the Moog One, Mini Moog Model D, Legacy Modular Gear, and our newest innovative products, the first of which you will see early next year. So at least based on what they are saying here, you can assume that the rest of the products are going to be made overseas. I do think it is strange that they are saying that they will manufacture their new products in this location as well too, because you would assume that their newer products would probably be made overseas if they're going to make products overseas. I do feel like what they're saying is a bit of a yes, but no, but yes, but no sort of situation. We are also asking some of our overseas partners who we've worked with for years to help finish assembly on some products products. This hybrid approach will allow us to get on strong financial footing and continue designing, building, and delivering quality musical instruments for years to come. So this is kind of what I was talking about here. Which products are they finishing? Uh, who are these overseas partners? It's Taiwan. That's... It's Taiwan. But yeah, they're being incredibly vague because they don't want to say too much, essentially. What I'm thinking is maybe some of these products will be partially manufactured in Asheville and then the rest of it will be finished overseas. At least that's what I'm gathering from what they are saying here. Obviously, you can hope that the quality doesn't drop. It could go either way, really. But the price on older Moogs will most likely skyrocket. So buy now, guys. Buy low. Sell high. This is not financial advice. Okay, in our last story of the night here, we're gonna be reacting to a clip maybe a lot of you have seen. I do think I have some interesting opinions here, but yeah, let's watch it. It's uh, pretty fucked up. This is one of the worst things somebody's probably ever done to me while street performing. So obviously, like, you know, the kids around, they're having a little bit of fun. You know, some people are doing some dumb dances, maybe like poking fun at him a little bit here. But then this girl just walks up and just shoves her hand on the keyboard, making dissonant noise. I don't think that was what he was going for. So this kind of stuff happens here and there. So I usually just keep playing through it. But after what's about to happen, I had to stop. This was also the last song of the night. And side note, I do this to see people happy. So please don't harass the person in this video. As you may guess, people do harass her, but you know, you, there's only so much you can do with a disclaimer. It's like those words are just being thrown into a tornado. And the waitress is practicing politics. And the uh, so he's playing piano man there. Hope I don't get uh, copyright striked here. So as you can see there, she knocked down the keyboard. She does say she's sorry afterwards, but I mean, like she was intentionally trying to fuck with him. Like, I mean, so she got her wish essentially, but just uh, went further than she expected. She said, I'll give you a hundred dollars. So it says here that she steals money out of the bucket. I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell from the angle whether she steals money out of the bucket or puts money in there because she does seem like she is a bit sorry there. And she does. She did say she'll give you $100. I mean, I'm not saying she gave the money. I'm not saying she stole it. I'm just saying I don't know. It's not clear that she stole the money. It's really hard to tell because her hand's blurry there as it's coming back. Like, it does seem like you might see money right here, though. But that could just be the inside of her palm, too. Right. I mean, it's also hard to imagine that somebody would knock over the keyboard and then say they're going to give you $100 and then reach into the purse, put their hand in there and then instead steal money and then walk away. I mean, it would be it would be very evil for sure. Like, I mean, I'm not saying there's not somebody out there evil enough to do that. There definitely is. Wow. 
why would I want to hit about it? So are they like offering him to fight? You want to fight these four girls here? You know, I'm going to throw another, another idea out here to it. It is possible it's staged. Nah, I'm just kidding. It's not, it's not staged. <laughs> Because she gets harassed. She wrote an apology that was kind of like a pseudo apology. If this is staged, like it's totally fucking with her uh, online life. I got a really fucked up joke. I don't know if I should make it. That's what he gets for playing piano, man. Yeah, we got TikTok content now. I mean, he knows he's got TikTok content now. I don't know. I don't know, guys. What are you guys thinking? Is this staged? Is it real? Did she steal the money? I have no idea. I, I really can't tell. So to answer the question I've been asked the most, have I pressed charges? Yes, I have pressed charges. Case number is right here. Okay, he says he actually pressed charges. Now everything on TikTok is fake apparently, unless you're faking charges too. 0925015. And I've been talking to the police since that incident has happened. All right, secondly, this is the DMs that me and her exchanged on Instagram. This is part one. I didn't mean to mess your performance up. She did, though. She did mean to mess his performance up. That is that is just bullshit. Like, the whole intention was to mess his performance up. Uh, I didn't steal any money from you. I had punked, faked, and didn't break your... What? I had punked, faked... Well, I don't know what she's saying there. And I didn't break your piano. People are... Well, I mean, he would know if he if you broke his piano. Like, he's the one that's able to, to verify that. You can't verify that. I mean, I do think it's possible she didn't steal the money like it could go either way in my opinion what she might have done is like go in to put money like maybe she had money in her hand and then she like meant to make it look like she put it in there and then didn't put it in there so that could have been what you saw in her hand but she also could have stolen the money it could go either way really like it's really hard to tell if it didn't seem like there was so much blowback on another person i would totally think this is fake and it I'm seems still... like a, this seems like a great way to get attention to your tiktok all right that story was something else the analysis of that was much longer than i intended it to be in our last story of the night, Drake gifted Sexy Red an iced out Cartier watch. And I just want to say, Sim. That's it for this episode of WNN. If you press the like button on this video, I will give you an iced out, an iced out Cartier watch. I will only give it to the first person that likes this video though. Joke's on you guys. I'm always the first person to like my videos. I, the second I post it, open it up, like. I'm the first every single time, so nobody's getting sh If you made it to the end of the video, make sure to comment, thank you Weaver for the Cartier watch down below. If you enjoyed this news video, make sure to check out my last news video. I'll link it at the end here or a playlist of all my news videos. I'll link that in the description. I will also have the free links as well as a few other things down in the description, second channel, Patreon, if you want to support the channel. I'll see you guys next time.